How are Agilists faring in the pandemic? How are we finding meaning and purpose in these troubled times? How can we connect, inspire, and support each other? We will explore answers to these questions and more. This is Agile Caravan Sarai. I'm Sanjeev Augustine. As the co-creator of Scrum and also one of the 17 authors of the Agile Manifesto, Jeff Sutherland needs very little introduction in the Agile community. Jeff originally designed Scrum based on Takeuchi and, and Nonaka's landmark Harvard Business Review paper called The New New Product Development Game. They, of course, were applying those techniques with self-managing teams to hardware manufacturers, and Jeff and later Ken Schwaber took that and created Scrum. Jeff also brought in his background as a fighter pilot and incorporated the techniques from John Boyd's Observe, Orient, Decide, and Act, or OODA loop, for quick decision-making. Along with Ken Schwaber, Jeff has pioneered Scrum over the last 20 years, and today it is the leading Agile method, including forming the base for several other Agile methods, including the Scaled Agile Framework or SAFE. I first met Jeff a decade ago through my business partner, Arlen Bankston. Arlen and Jeff had collaborated over in Europe, and since then, we've been working a stateside. We've also been inspired to, by Jeff's example to apply the OODA loop in conditions of great uncertainty, including the current circumstances with our pandemic crisis. Most recently, Jeff has been championing Scrum through the Scrum Guide. And in fact, Jeff and Ken Schwaber have just released a brand new version of the Scrum Guide. So I hope you go check out the Scrum Guide. And here is Jeff Sutherland. Jeff, it's so good to see you. Welcome to the Agile Caravan Sarai interview series. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here, and thank you for uh, making it today. Yeah, great to be here. Good to talk to you again. Thanks, Jeff. So we have a, a few questions for you, and I want to jump straight into the first one. The first question I have for you is, it's coming up on the 20th, 20th anniversary of the Agile movement, and more specifically of the signing of the Agile Manifesto. Now, you are one of the authors and as one of those people who sort of helped found the Agile movement, uh, I want to ask you the question, what are your reflections on the last 20 years of Agile? Well, one of the things that's been interesting to me is that Scrum has been, become the dominant Agile implementation. About 80% of what is Agile is actually a Scrum implementation. And a lot of people ask me where Scrum is working well. They don't realize that the three largest companies in the world are, sc are scrum companies. They're, they're trillion dollar companies or, or in Apple's case, $2 trillion companies because scrum is driving their product. So it's a, it's a combination of, of course, being innovative, uh, but it, it, it's also, but you, if you can't deliver, it doesn't matter how innovative you are. And like Amazon has 3,300 scrum teams that are delivering a new feature more than once a second that makes them, totally dominant in whatever market they go in. So what's happened is you cannot be a great company today without being agile. <laughs> and companies are realizing that. And so now we have massive numbers of agile transformations going on all over the world. And that's, that's mainly what I'm involved in. Fantastic. So you had um, Apple and Amazon and uh, the third company? Microsoft. Microsoft, okay. So um, I want to segue to another question, and this is the uh, question about you personally. And I want to bring in a little bit of your history. You know, in your book, The uh, Art of Doing Twice the Work and Half the Time, you talk about your own stories and you talk about, uh, in particular, your experience as a, as a fighter pilot using the OODA loop uh, and that sort of uh, advanced loop of uh, response and reaction in real time. So I want to ask you about that and also just follow up also if you want to go straight into talking about how are you doing in, in the pandemic? Well, I'm doing great in the pandemic. I'm not traveling, but it turns out that I actually can talk to a lot more people remotely than if I was traveling. So <laughs> that's been great. Uh, but one of the things that's emerged and particularly uh, in recent years, uh, we have a subsidiary now in Japan uh, where the majority shareholder is actually one of the biggest companies in Japan that's owned 20% by Toyota. Mm. And, uh, and they, they, when we started working together, they said, you know, 
uh, the scrum guide is not enough. Just teaching the scrum guide is not enough. We're, we're actually not only owned by Toyota, but we are the trainers for Toyota. So mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you need to have, teach scrum the way Nonaka and Takeuchi talk about scrum. Oh, okay. Those Japanese professors is where we got the scrum name. They were looking at lean hardware companies. Right. So, so the scrum ha has to be lean. Now, with respect to the OODA loop, Professor Nanaka is now writing a book on the U.S. Marines mm. who have, who've adopted John Boyd's OODA loop as the core of their strategy, mm -hmm. which is basically John trained, you know, my fighter pilot trainer, everybody's trained in, in this way of thinking. As you engage, you encounter resistance from multiple ways. You have competition, but you also have internal resistance in a company. So as an executive, you're trying to get something done and your own people are trying to stop you from doing it, right? And you have external effects, you know, people quit, things break. So John says, the very act of engaging is to flush out the opposition. And as soon as you see it, you reorient, you decide to come in at a different angle. And then, then the resisting forces will move, but before they can move, you're, you're executing another OODA loop. And so the whole idea is Do it fast. To get inside the OODA loop of your opponent and you win 100% of the time. Well, Professor Naka says that is the root of innovation, okay? Interesting. You're going to iterate your product. And then when the competition starts to knock you off, you're going to all, all be circling to add other features or dimensions that makes it impossible for the competition to move as fast that has happened big time now with a with Apple. If you look at the chip evolution, Apple's M1 chip has been going 10 times as fast in terms of power as Intel's chips. And they've reached the crossover point where now it's, it's better for them, the Intel chips. They're going away from Intel. Amazon's going away from Intel. Other people are starting to do it. It's a massive disruption uh, in the industry because of this innovation, okay? And so one of the things we're teaching in Scrum now is, you know, it, it's critically important. The Donaka Scrum <laughs> means not just the PDCA cycle at Toyota. We do teach that. Right. But that is not enough. Today, Toyota has to innovate. You know, they Tesla has almost three times the market capitalization of Toyota. I told people this was going to happen 10 years ago. Nobody believed me. Mm -hmm. But maybe they still don't believe you. They still don't believe me, even though they <laughs> even though that if they <laughs> look at, at the stock market, Tesla's gone up so much, I've had to start my own company called mm -hmm. Tesla Investment Holdings. It's essentially a mutual fund to manage the tremendous explosion uh, that uh, it's not just Tesla, but there's a few other things, but mm -hmm. it started by, I bought one of the first roadsters and I got friends and family stock for $17. Ah, great. Okay. So they you should have listened to you 10, 10 years ago. Right. So you can run the numbers. You can figure out what that's worth right now. <laughs> yeah. Because they you. split, they split five times. So I, I got, my stock was $3 and 50 cents. And right now it's pushing 600. Uh, I did have a quick follow-up question uh, around uh, on the OODA loop because uh, I found an, uh, in our own business as well that uh, there's the observe, orient, decide, and act. And we're reasonably good at observing. We're pretty good at deciding and acting. It's the orienting that I find is is a big, big issue because we sometimes don't believe reality or we don't believe Jeff Sutherland if he's telling us to buy Tesla stock. Yeah. Well... Yeah. It's really interesting if you study John on the orienting part. He says yeah. the orienting is, pay, is based on your personal history, yeah. your emotional structure, mm -hmm. your ability to sense and respond. So, you know, uh, the product owner is the one in Scrum that primarily has to do this. Everybody needs to do this, but the product owner is leading. And so, some products owners are really good at this and others are too slow and not responsive enough. Okay. So it's all about at the end of the day, a person responding to change, which is often ambiguous. You know, the Tesla case, everybody said, 
I, I, I've been working with BMW, Mercedes, Volkswagens for over 10 years. I, I, I told them, you've got a problem. <laughs> now, most of them are doing scrum, so at least they've listened that much, but they still don't have their cars connected. They still can't update their cars every two weeks like Tesla. They're still not, Tesla introduces thir- 13 new product changes into the assembly line every quarter, which is every quarter. 52 times faster mm-hmm. than Ford, okay? 52 times faster means you totally crush all competition. And that that's what people don't don't see. They they can't look at a growth path that's going to grow exponential and they can't they can't recognize that you know it's like the lily pond the lilies in a pond if they double every day. Yeah, they keep growing in <laughs> on the last day they reach 100%. The last day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's an old fable around that. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. That's a, that's a very uh, great analogy. And uh, you're talking about exponential growth and how Tesla has been uh, achieving that with their application of the OODA loop. Now, uh, the, our third and final question, um, as we're looking forward in this pandemic time, lots of people are maybe getting discouraged. Uh, we're going into, going into pretty dark winter here. I think there's 200,000 uh, COVID cases a day uh, here in the U.S. and then 3,000 deaths, some of the highest numbers we're seeing. And the, this has certainly affected uh, people the world over. So as somebody who's been a stalwart, a co-founder of, and co-author of Scrum, and of course, definitely one of the uh, manifesto authors, what advice and inspiration would you have for, for your all the people who are associated with Scrum and with Agile methods the world over? Well, w- what what people need to realize that COVID has created a great divide because thousands, probably tens of thousands of companies are going bankrupt just here in the United States. It's the biggest rush of bankruptcies in the history of the United States. Mm. But those companies that are have agility and can respond, uh, you know, tes- Tesla stock, Amazon stock, Microsoft stock, <laughs> Datadog stock, uh, our customers like Pegasus, they're, Tesla has accelerated their their stock growth and their non-agile competition is going bankrupt. So what I'm communicating to the agile people today is that you are the key to the future. Mm. People have had kind of this idea, oh, maybe senior management's gonna save us. The only thing that's gonna save them is business agility. And the people that are gonna execute on that are the agile trainers, the agile coaches, and they need to step up to that responsibility. And the executives need to start listening to them if they want to survive. <laughs> so that's the big change. And that's not going to go away. Uh, one of the biggest uh, biotechs in the world, CDVP, sent me a note. As soon as the COVID lockdown happened, he said, Jeff, thank God we went to Scrum last fall. Because as soon as the lockdown came, within a week, we're at normal operations. Right. Our waterfall competition they are flatlined. They cannot innovate. They cannot deliver. Uh, whenever we come out of the COVID thing, it will take them a year to even catch up to where they were before they shut down. Meanwhile, we're expanding, we're accelerating, we're executing the OODA loop. Right. They will never catch up. And that's what your executives need to understand. If you are not agile, if you can't execute on business agility, you will not survive long-term in the COVID world. Well, thank you. That's a great closing thought that the agilists are the key to the future and they need to step up and executives and uh, need to listen to them. And if agilists are executives, then those, those two are meeting. So that's wonderful. Thank exactly. you, Jeff. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.